Shut up and sit down. Welcome once again to the Shy Talks Podcast Show, episode 99. One away from the big 100 episode on the podcast. So excited about that. And today I'm joined by Liam Hughes. Liam is a guy I've known since I basically started training in Hasari. I basically started training Jiu Jitsu or MMA. So we basically just chatted, went down memory lane, talked about all our fond memories of us competing. Um, I learned actually a lot about him. Uh, stuff I didn't know and I've known him for six years now so that was quite interesting I'm not going to give any spoilers he's also studying um, sports science in Carlo Institute of Technology and so he's um, right now what he's working in work placement is trying to help people keep strong through their cancer treatment has had like pretty much really good uh, effects of um people actually surviving if they actually do exercise through their cancer treatment so that was really interesting so we talked to him about that and we also basically went to memory lane chat uh, chat for about an hour it's really interesting I'm not going to give you any spoilers right now you have to listen to figure out what we actually chat about here it is on the show talk Pogo show Liam, this is the 99th show. Nice one, 99. Very, very close. <laughs> <laughs> very close to 100 episodes. And You're getting there anyway. That's the yeah. most important thing. Uh, and uh, I finally have, uh, I finally have you on the podcast. We've been trying to, we've been trying to actually get you on for a while. Yeah, you know what, man? I'm delighted. I'm always delighted to be part of it. You know, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's cool, man. You have some set up here. It's actually really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's uh, kind of just collected over time, really. Yeah. Ah. Look, it looks absolutely savage. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, it's like, I'm gonna do be doing a promotion pretty soon around the uh, whole because we're reaching 100 episodes. The next episode will be 100, so I'm gonna be going back through like a few of the episodes throughout the years. And like the very first episode I did was with um, your man from uh, Chu Jitsu, uh, and. Uh, so I'll be like promoting that one, and then uh, I always cringe listening to that. <laughs> yeah, I can because, imagine. Like, it's like looking at all photos, isn't it? Yeah, oh man, it's even worse <laughs> than that. Because like at that stage, you didn't even know how to use a microphone p- properly. Like it was a condenser microphone. So these ones you're talking in from the top, condenser you're talking in from the side. I didn't know that at the time. So the whole interview I was doing from I was talking in from the top. <laughs> so my audio was just awful because I wasn't picking up any the sound properly or at night. Like that so I was <laughs> so I always cringe at that, and it's always kind of, it was like one of my first interviews that I've I've ever d- done. I remember when I first started in Hosaria. I think you were just you you probably maybe just joined a few months ago, and you were preparing for a fight at Celtic Gladiator. That's right, actually. Um, yeah, I was actually. One of the guys that I used to train with in the Berserkers, he actually, uh, 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 Chris, he rang me one day and he says, he knew I was looking to get into MMA and um, he rang me and he said, uh, listen, there's a fight coming up in two months, would you be interested in taking it? And I went, yeah, fuck yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I went out to, went out to um, Huzari, which is in Clane at the time, run by Marius uh, Domasat. And I walked in and I said, uh, "Listen, I, I've been offered a fight in two months, two months, two months and four days time. <laughs> and this is on a Friday. <laughs> and uh, I said to Marius, I said, um, yeah, I, w- I would like you to, you know, get me ready for it.' And he goes, "Right, sure, no problem." So, so I paid him up front for the two months. And he says, uh, "Do you drink?" I said, "I do." Do you smoke? I said, "No, never smoked in my life." He says, "Right, go out tonight. Go out tomorrow night." Yeah. Yeah. Recover all day Sunday and be here Monday. And he says, "Monday, you belong to me." <laughs> <laughs> and that was, and that was it. And then for two months, he just kicked my arse. Yeah, I mean, to get get me ready for it, like you know. And I've never looked back. So that for me, then, who's already became my home. Then after that, oh, that's that's quite nice. And before that, had you ever done any kind of groundwork, or was because I know you've done a bit of boxing, big kickboxing beforehand before joining Hosaria. Uh, no, oh, I was doing, I was doing a lot of, uh, I was doing a lot of boxing. I was doing a lot of kickboxing, and um, I was interested in doing the ground game. And the Berserkers were actually training in Ace at the time, um, in Ledger Centre. The guy running it was uh, Peter Stowski. And uh, I went in one day and I said, you know, interested in joining the class. And I was, 
for a long time, I was the only Irish guy in the class. Everybody else was Polish. Yeah. All right? And the ling- I couldn't take take any of the lingo. I think they just felt sorry for me. I <laughs> just said, come on, go in and train. But, uh, yeah, I train I trained with them for uh, for uh, about six or seven months until I uh, tore ligaments in my, in my, uh, in my ankle. And um, so I, I took time off and then I came back. And then I was off for the fight. So... And I didn't know anybody that was uh, teaching MMA at the time. Yeah. And uh, so I went, I was looking looking around, Google and stuff, and then Marius' uh, name came up. So I just went straight out, straight out to his eye and took a chance. And yeah, I guess I was in Clane at the time. You you were living in Kildare. Where you were living probably... I, I was actually living in Newbridge at the time. And this is how this is how crazy I was when preparing for, for, uh, for a fight camp. I used to cycle from Newbridge to clean <laughs> train for four hours and cycle home <laughs> that's how yeah like, I actually remember that <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. I mean my, my, my cardio was absolutely true to roof. I wish my cardio was as good now I can tell you that yeah because like when I first started yeah I'd, I'd see like I'd, I'd come like near the end of, end of the probably your training session because you do strength and conditioning you would then go into probably the jiu jitsu class and maybe do a few either a bit of sparring then well, people were doing kickboxing because the old, old schedule was like strength and conditioning, jiu-jitsu, and kickboxing was on after. So you would have done... <laughs> I've done, done them all, yeah. Yeah, and then you would have cycled home. Yeah. Off in your jolly way. <laughs> done that five days a week. Yeah. Uh, it was good, though, because, uh, yeah, I ended up winning my uh, first fight at Celtic Gladiator yeah. uh, against uh, Matty Goo. Um, was it a straight foot lock? No, he had you in a straight foot lock. Yeah, and I wouldn't tap. I just... Yeah. Uh, I was just and... Uh, he had me in a straight footlock and I just kept hammer fisting him into the head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I ended up winning. I nearly knocked him out in the first round. A true savage combination. A left hook, straight right hand. And he, Marius was screaming, finish him, finish him. And I was so, it was because of my first MMA fight, um, I was a little, little bit green. And um, I didn't realize that I had him dazed. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, uh, just backed off. I shouldn't have, but anyway, I, I ended up winning. Winning in the end, it, it was uh, actually, it was actually a good fight. He, um, I knew he was going to try to take me down because he was a wrestler. Yeah, everybody knows I, I'm a striker, and I, literally everybody I fought have always tried to take me down. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, because you've, you, I think, what have you four fights now? Uh, five, 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 fights. five, yeah. five six, seven. Yeah. Eight fights. Eight fights. Yeah, eight fights. Eight yeah. fights. In that many. Um, I don't even remember four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know where I was, I was for wrestling. Uh, yeah, because I even remember when I, when I I I fought MMA, and the story gets got like kind of twisted and changed. So I like Rory's uh, version of what happened. Um, in my first MMA fight? Now, if you remember correctly, I cornered you for that fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I remember. laughs> right, for everybody who's listening who's listening to this. That's, this that's the one with Cam. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is actually a true story. You done predominantly K1. Yeah. And absolutely savage at K1. So we got Mark in an MMA fight. I was in the Living Eye, wasn't it? Yeah, Living Eye. Yeah, that was actually cool. And the guy, <laughs> the, the guy that you were fighting, you were... You and the stand up, you were just hammering them left, right, and center. Oh no! What 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 happened was like, uh, how how uh, Rory tells the story is: Have you ever seen the episode of Simpsons where Homer gets into boxing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he comes to professional boxing, but he he wins his boxing matches by making the guy tired by letting them punch him in the head, and as soon as they get tired. They get knocked. Uh, he, he just knocks them over with uh, more to do with exhaustion than actually <laughs> yeah. any technique. Rory always says that's how I won the fight because, <laughs> like K one's all about like walking the guy down and striking him in the pocket, and, yeah. or at least that's like how I used to do K one. And your man was throwing like a lot over hands, so I kept just walking them down. <laughs> yeah, you just yeah. But I remember just before the fight ended, you hit him a savage knee. Right in into into the chest. Yeah, I think it was just before the round. And down and down he he hit the ca- canvas like like a ton of bricks. And you being you thought it was K one. You walked away from him then, <laughs> and you walk it back over to your corner. We sat around going, Mark, what the fuck are you doing? It's it's not K one. It's MMA. Go back and finish him. And you went, oh yeah. And you went back over and you hammer fisted him twice in the head, and then the ref I, called I it. Yeah, because I, I I walked towards his legs. W- walked around his legs. The ref still hasn't hadn't stopped the fight at this yeah, stage. You were going, wow, wow, he's knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hammer fist him twice, and the referee, go, oh, yeah, he had enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In fairness, by the time like 
I walked away and came back. The referee should have seen, like, your man is, like, clearly dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not getting back off. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that was a savage knee. I mean, you just hear the the, the, the whole crowd going, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but I always laugh at the way. Rory tells the story that, like, I just let, kept letting him punch me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just keep walking forward. Yeah, <laughs> but we're, like, we're gonna cover up, Mark. Cover up. He, oh, he was man. like laying into my legs with like these like low kicks, and I remember like halfway through the round, going, I better start checking these because they'll start really, they really hurt. And then yeah. after the fight, I was like, oh, my legs are actually starting to get a bit sore. And then when once I got out of the ring, because I was uh, fought in a boxing ring, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is actually getting really, really sore. And then by the time I got home, I couldn't walk. It's like limb. <laughs> Cam fought in that card as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, he did the opposite thing to me. Was he was fighting a K one match, knocked a guy down, and nearly went for a hammer fist. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, nearly got himself disqualified. <laughs> and geez, Cam was what? He was twenty two, twenty four stone at that time. Yeah, like he. Cam, really, really nice. He's after losing a shitload of weight. He looks great. Oh, he looks amazing. But in great shape. But he's just usually obese guy. He was back then. And he could do the splits. And when he threw a head kick, nobody could believe that he was able to kick the high. Yeah, in no. In fact, when you hit your man to kick in the head, your man nearly... You, you, you <laughs> man just wanted to run out of the <laughs> ring. <laughs> Who, what was the name of the guy that was running that, that card? Uh, the, there's a Brazilian guy and then there's an Irish guy. Uh, the Irish guy. Was it Stephen? No, Sean. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He was a dickhead, that lad, right? Because I'll tell you a story. He actually, I was supposed to fight in that card, and he said, uh, "Will you fight uh, heavyweight?" And I said, "No, I fight light heavyweight, two or five, ninety-three kgs." Yeah. And he goes, "Would you accept heavyweight fight?" And I went, "Well, how, how heavy are we talking?" And he goes, "I get a guy, you know, same experiences." Yeah. I said, "Right, I'll think about it anyway." So he goes, "Yeah, I got a guy. I want you to fight him." I said, "Okay. What weight is he?" He goes, "He's one hundred and forty kgs," and I was going. Not a hope. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, like, not a hope. So I said, you know what? I'm not interested. So then, on the fight night, the guy that he wanted me to fight was there, right? And he, he ended up fighting in MMA. The guy was an Indian dude. He was six foot nine. Do you remember yeah. him? Yeah, I remember. He yeah, found Cork. Cork. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> in the SPG Cork. Yeah. And I was going, and he wanted me to fight that lad. Like, there would have been <laughs> nothing I would have been able to do to this lad. Like, <laughs> I, like you want to hit him with a chair and he's still <laughs> moving forward. He's like the Grey Cali. I never liked your man after that. Just leave me that fella. Yeah. He's in prison now, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Turns out, turns out he was involved in the, that shooting in. Uh, uh, let's let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, just so you don't lie. <laughs> just so you don't libel yourself <laughs> there, Liam. <laughs> There's certain things you can't you can't yeah. just say. I <laughs> know oh, it was all over the news anyway. Yeah. Turns out he was a hitman. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a, like there's a yeah. So once he's convicted, uh, yeah, let's. That's it. He's convicted. He's done. Yeah, yeah. L- like I, we probably we probably didn't even give his real name, so <laughs> yeah. you're probably okay on that yeah. point. Yeah, but you you've been doing martial arts for longest time. Oh yeah, forever. Yeah, I uh, I started off with um, I started off really young doing judo, um, then I left that then and I started with a guy in Newbridge, uh, Jerry Loftus. Anybody who's anybody knows who Jerry Loftus is. Like he was one of them original mar- martial art artists here in Kildare. Um, so I, I started doing Mujendo kickboxing with him. I ended up get, getting my black belt with Jerry. I trained with Jerry for years, and man, that guy gets you fit. He actually done a strength and conditioning camp for um, that boxer. What's gone done? Oh really? Yeah, and he uh, was also uh, done some of the strength and conditioning for the Kildare team. All right. Yeah. So um. Yeah. So I started with Jerry, and then uh, Jerry then always a man of ambition. Uh, he gave up kickboxing for a while because he went back to college, and to to get a degree. So then I was looking for something different. So I started training in in jitsu in Nas with Stephen Rooney, and that's where I met Paul Roberts, because uh, oh, yeah, he, Paul yeah. Paul came in one day uh, looking for a spar, and I said I back then I just spar anybody. So yeah. so. I was sparring Paul. I didn't realise that Paul was uh, an Ireland learning uh, champion kickboxer at the time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I used to know a guy who used to train with me. And uh, yeah, I sparred, sparred with Paul and he literally beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just bent me up. <laughs> and uh, and at, at the end of it, I said, man, that was no, that was a great sparring. And he says, uh, he says, yeah, you're a good kickboxer. He says, but you know what? Your, your hands need to be faster. So I said, what do you think I should do? He goes, you need to join a boxing club. So I joined St. David's Boxing Club. And here in this, and then um, I f- oh, what year was that? Was that the one when it was in the convent? 
no, St. David's Boxing Club. That was up by the fire station. Fire station? Oh, all right. Yeah, that's, that, that, was, that was a different one. Uh, yeah. Then I went out to train out in Kilcullen because that's where Paul was training at the time. Yeah. In Kilcullen Boxing Club. And then I introduced uh, Paul to Marius. Oh, right. And then... Um, that's how that kind of happened. Yeah, and then Paul started to teach a boxing out in... Out in Clay then, yeah. And now he has a very successful yeah, I still train with Paul. I still yeah. train with Paul out in uh, Clay Boxing. And he actually there. has a kickboxing club in there now. Yeah, uh, David Osada. He has... Um, yeah. He's training out there as well. And he there's, there's some, that, some young lad also who's, who fights professionally now in kickboxing. Can't think of his. Don't oh, his uh, name. Aaron Clark. Is yeah, Aaron Clark. Yeah, yeah really nice guy. Really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, he tra- he he also is. Uh, I think is he helping train out there? He used to train with David uh, Blaska. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, yeah. No. What you call it? Uh, David Osada. He's actually d- coaching. He's uh, coaching the K one, and he d- does coaches some of the the box as well. But yeah, and I think Aaron Aaron is training there. Like, all oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he's training with uh, David. Oh, that that's really good because he uh, yeah because I know. I know uh, they both used to train with uh, David. Yeah, because I only asked about if it was in the convent because uh, I used to do boxing in the convent when I was, when I was about when I was very young. Um, when I was in like in primary school, I just thought maybe we would have, we would have actually crossed paths before. Yeah, you know, probably never. You probably never know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. I remember I used to do boxing for years. I nearly had a I had a fight in boxing uh, at that stage. I was training about six months. And they're getting ready for a show, and then I was going with uh, con- my uncle's fiance's at the time son. I was training with him, but he left, so I was like, I left. <laughs> 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 so yeah, uh, so it would been would have been cool if we, we actually were actually training in the same boxing club. Oh, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, we're actually realizing, but I don't even know what happened to that uh, when it, that was in the convent. Uh, is that the Abbey in in Clan? Is it? Um, it was in uh, no, it was in Nice. It used to be used. To, they used to do the boxing classes, like you know, in the convent church. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They used to do one. Um, they used to do them there years and years ago. It used to be like in a little room. They used to rent out the hall. They must have rented out the hall t- uh, to them. Do you remember? Do you remember any of the head coaches? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I was like, so some guy I used to go to school with did boxing. I joined with my cousin, or not even my cousin, uh, and then I left when he left. So it was, it was very, <laughs> very short time. I was like just passing through, really, uh, in there. Yeah, but yes, yeah, what I really wanted to know was, and I can't believe I, I don't know the story already, is how do you got the name Flash? All right. <laughs> All right. My mother's going to kill me for this one. Um, I used to be a stripper. It used to be a strip. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> How um, long ago? Now, oh, many years ago, I was right. eighteen. Now, I, I my career as a stripper only lasted about eight months. That was it. <laughs> and um, it, it was there was uh, five of us. We were called escort, and we used to do pubs and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, man, it was great money. It really was great money. And uh, but one time we were doing a surprise fortieth. Yeah. And we were. I was doing my thing and the women were screaming, take it off, take it off. And through the crowd, my mother put it on. So my mother and my aunt went to this thing <laughs> and then realized her son was stripping off naked on stage. Oh my God. Yeah, man, it was murder. I got kicked out of the house over there. <laughs> you know, it was murder. Yeah. She disowned me for about two weeks. And so that ended that. And the world just got so. Everyone, there, here's Flash. So, oh, because uh, <laughs> okay. I, I would have thought like maybe it was because of the comic book character or <laughs> some <laughs> kind of weird <laughs> Flash Gordon reference. You know what? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, re- I really wish. What did your mother say to you when uh, when you when you got home? Or oh, man, it oh. was murder. My because my mother and father are staunch Catholics. You know what I mean? <laughs> Church going and prayer groups and all that kind of stuff and. And then when I, I went home, man, my bags are packed. Like, <laughs> dude, you're not like, what are you doing at a strip club? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I tried to turn around yeah, on them. You know what? I wish I was educated enough back then to even turn that back around. Because <laughs> I was just, there was everything going through my mind. Going, and I was trying to think of every excuse going. And uh, no, it just wasn't happening. <laughs> I, I had a massive drug debt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had to pay off. But yeah, um, yeah. So it's just basically people just seeing you get into your nip. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, uh, that, that, I guess that makes sense. Because yeah. like you, you, one thing you always said anytime I trained with you, you strike and you're like speed kills, and it's like oh, that's why they call him the Flash. <laughs> yeah. uh, speed does kill. <laughs> yeah, speed does kill. Yeah. Um, you're right now. You're doing 
you're doing sports science. Yeah, I'm actually doing sports science in IT Carlo. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the things I was talking to you, I think, a few weeks ago, what you're studying, uh, what you're kind of what they're looking into now is the correlation between uh, cancer survival and uh, exercise. Yeah, it's actually actually really really great. I'm actually working as part of um, third year. We had to go on work placement. So I got a work placement with uh, Dr. Noel McCaffrey of, of DCU, and um, the program is called the uh, MedEx program. Now he's gone out of uh, DCU, he's branching all over Ireland, and it's called the Expel program now, because, you know, DCU have the kind of the patent on the original name. Yeah. So uh, we're based uh, predominantly in Santry Sports Link. So it was really cool because what what we've discovered is years ago when when you when you got when you got diagnosed with cancer, you you got nine weeks of chemotherapy or radiotherapy, and the doctor said just go home, do nothing, rest, get your chemo, and then we'll come in and we'll operate on you. Turns out that's actually the worst advice that they could ever give. Yeah. So what to do is, when they get their diagnosis, they re- they refer to Doctor Noel McCaffrey and, and 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 us, and what we do is we put them through a strength and conditioning program for the nine weeks uh, before uh, their operation to go to go in to get operated on then two weeks after the operation they come back to us and we retrain them again and mm. what we found what they found is that there's a higher chance of survival if you're going in for your operation much stronger because it strengthens your immune system and um, so now that we've get, we're getting referrals from literally all over Ireland for pe- people who want to be part of the program so you know what Exercise is medicine. Uh, yeah, because uh, like one one of the kind of things people might have said uh, before you, this research got done was, would have been like your immune system through cancer treatment is so low. Like if you get a cold, this is very serious. You have to go to you have to go to hospital. You have to get these injections into you. Um, like you can die from a cold, uh, or you can die from the slight bit of uh, infection that you get. So doing exercise would possibly lower your risk. Of uh, 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 or doing exercise probably high, uh, bringing a higher risk of getting these colds or because you're sweating, you're heating and cooling down. But what the research has showed that your immune system actually increases. Yeah, it actually, it actually, actually gets much stronger. So, um, yeah, and then after they after they c- they come back from the operation, their strength has dropped only marginally, yeah. and within within six six to eight weeks, we have them back up to what they re- to what. Uh, original strength we got them up to in the first place so it's really it's really really great and it's it's really um it's really heartwarming because you see these people from the from the very start when they've just got their they've just got their diagnosis say a week beforehand yeah and been sent to us and you can see the fear in their eyes and you can see the worry you have to train them and you, it's not just putting them through a training program you know it's psychology as well you know you're talking to them you know you're reassuring them yeah you know you're becoming friendly and just just being part of that journey to see them come out the other side healthy. Yeah, so... It's just amazing. So, uh, with this exercise, for, for people who m- might be listening to it, who might have people who, who are who are either going through cancer right now, uh, is there any kind of... Is there a certain amount of uh, exercise you should be getting in a week for if you're a cancer patient? Or is there a certain type of exercise? Is, this, is it more weight-based training or is it more cardiovascular training? Uh, it's actually it's actually both. Um, both are very important. Uh, minimum... You, what you want to be getting in is two days a week, absolute absolute minimum. Yeah. Um. Max max uh, f- five times a week. That's a, that's a lot of training if you are going through cancer. It, yeah, well, it, it sounds like a lot, but it's actually not. Like you're you're going into the gym, you're only training for say forty five minutes. Yeah. Like I mean, I'd rather train forty five minutes than die. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um. You oh, know, no, no, don't get me wrong. I, I train <laughs> yeah. every day. Like I, uh, if I could, uh, like, uh, but like if you're going through ca- cancer treatment, you would. Uh, you imagine that your energy levels will be quite low. It, it actually it actually does be dependent on on how the the body reacts to chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Some people just get a little, little uh, nauseous. Mm. Some people it just knocks them out for days. So generally, most of the people I train only come in two days a week. Yeah, and to do their own bit, bit of walking home. But once they come in and get the, get them two days in, that's important. And we track the progress. You know, uh, we we were. Co- we record all their data, then we can retest them in six to eight weeks' time just to see what their strength levels are at and stuff like that. Like, is there any uh, research being uh, going on in Ireland over saunas? Because I don't know if you've listened to uh, 
Dr. Ronald Patrick, she's talked a bit about saunas. And the uh, heat shock proteins. Yeah, yeah heat shock I, proteins. I actually don't know if there's any studies going on in Ireland about that, but that's really, 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 really interesting. Because uh, where I want to specialise um, is preventative medicine. Yeah. Um, I think that's where, and uh, also longevity. Yeah. Um, so I like listening to Dr. Ronald Patrick or, um, Dr. or Professor David Sinclair of Harvard. He's doing studies in... Uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, M N, and and um, there's a, a drug for uh, diabetes. Um, oh, I can't think of the name, but it'll come back to me. But it's metformin, that's it. Uh, metformin, and even people who don't have diabetes, if they take this medicine, it actually helps prevent uh, heart disease and a certain amount of cancers. Oh, right. Yeah, now there's there's studies being done of that at the moment, but I'm still looking into it. But uh, yeah, saunas and... He- and uh, the only thing, the only thing about the saunas, though, Mark, is this to, to get the health benefits of it that uh, Doctor Ronda Patrick's talking about. You have to be in at least a half an hour. Yeah, it's a long time to be sitting in the sauna. Yeah. I, now I've been trying. I've only managed to get up as far as fifteen minutes. Like, 15, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fifteen minutes. But you know what the thing is? The good thing about a sauna is that you can't bring your phone into it because, like, the heat of a sauna. As well as the humidity in the sun, it will fuck your phone <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. So you're, you're kind of forced to, like... Think. Sit in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sit in this room and, like, spend 30 minutes in your thoughts. Or you can go in there, or personally, you know, you can chat away for 30 minutes. But, yeah, I, I haven't actually... actually um, I haven't actually done any sauna treatment, but, but I've actually been saying to people, especially if they're a little bit sore from training or whatever... Because I think, you know, the cryo chambers, which is the opposite, yeah. but s- similar effects, just with cold uh, shock proteins. I think I'd rather spend 30 minutes in, in a sauna than five minutes in a cryo chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you looked at the Wim Hof method? Um, uh, the breathing exercises? Yeah, and he also, does, yeah. he also does the cold therapy as well. I was actually, yeah, I'm meaning to actually message uh, Wim Hof, about, or maybe I've, I've already messaged him. I don't know. I message so many people for podcast <laughs> yeah. interviews. I lose track. But yeah, I, I actually was trying to get them on the podcast. Yeah, I really would actually like to actually learn uh, a few of the breathing exercises. And yeah, there's uh, actually some brilliant um, YouTube uh, clips of how to do the breathing techniques. Yeah. And uh, now I've I started doing it myself uh, only recently. And uh, it takes a bit getting used to Um Actually done it in the car one day. I nearly crashed the car. <laughs> yeah. So well, won't be doing that again. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, talk talk us through how, how like a quick uh, of how you do like the the breathing. So basically, what you're doing is you're breathing in as, as, as deeply as you can, but only letting out half the breath. Yeah. And you do you do that thirty times. All right. All right. Then you breathe out, and then you you don't breathe in for two minutes. Yeah. So yeah. you hold your nose, do you? Uh, no, you don't. You don't have to hold your nose. All right. And then, um, and then, what happens? Then, after the two minutes, then you take one big deep breath in, hold for fifteen seconds, and let out. And that's one round, and you do three rounds. But because it's kind of like the, the start, it's kind of like the start, like you're you're hyperventilating. Yeah. But um, you do uh, you do get a little bit dizzy. Yeah. At the start, but then after uh, after you get used to it, you 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 feel great. Like you, it's really, really good for the mind. Like, cause it's uh, it's oxid oxidating, oxidating, uh, all all your cells that that uh, don't get uh, the the full effect. Normally, don't get the full effect of oxygen. It's actually, it's actually really, 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 really interesting. Yeah. And Wim Hof, uh, his scientists have actually uh, have studied what he's doing, and it's it's legit. You know, it's actually actually the yeah. They um, I don't know what disease they injected them into, but it uh, some e, uh, e. coli. E. coli. Yeah, they, that's what they did. Yeah, they injected E. coli into into his body, and he was able to control the virus. And he didn't actually end up getting sick from E. coli, and uh, so they they then they said like, okay, he could be just a freak. So what we'll do is we'll get a control um, study where we're going to get these people to stay, and he's going to show them the Wim Hop method. And we're also going to get a load of other people, and we're just going to do some stupid breathing exercises that don't, don't really work. And we're going to inject both of them with uh, with E. coli and see which ones get sick. And I think like over over half the people who he actually uh, taught how to do the breathing exercises didn't actually get sick, whereas everyone who were just doing breathing exercises that had no benefit to them, all got E. coli poisoning. <laughs> yeah. He was and actually able to control his own immune system. Yeah. Which is actually amazing. 
Well, yeah, which is which is incredible. Um, since doing the sports science, how has your own training uh, changed? What have you changed about your way of uh, training? Uh, well, overtraining. <laughs> I was doing four hours. Inside. Yeah, I was doing a lot of overtraining, and it was just wreaking havoc on on my immune system. And I was getting sick so much. Yeah, and um, and my energy levels just were, were sapped. Like, like after after each fight camp, after the fight, I had took two weeks off just yeah. to eat drink to be merry but just basically to heal my immune system i i was in bits after but you know it's really um it's really opened my eyes to to different types of training um how how your body uh reacts to different different stimuli so um yeah it's really it's really opened my eyes eyes to a lot of stuff and um like um i never really focused much before on uh plyometrics yeah, and since doing sports science, I've I've incorporated a lot of uh, plyometrics into uh, my training, and I'm I see the benefits because you know I'm getting faster, I've got much uh, faster reflexes. Yeah, and um, and it's 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 proven, you know, it's it's proven to work. So unless something's proven to work, I won't use it. <laughs> yeah, I went you know full science nerd. Yeah, yeah, exactly. From just using bro science to like <laughs> yeah. full science. Nerds. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was not proven. It's not, it's, it's no good to me. Yeah, no, because, like, uh, I've recently started to get... I used to never do weights. Uh, I used to do kind of maybe push-ups, and I used to do maybe... The most amount of weights, it was a Russian twist. Uh, but I, used to, I never used to work with weights. I've been actually using weights qu- well, quite a lot uh, recently in order to work on my flexibility. So just adding kind of weights to stretching exercise, for instance, or uh, and doing kind of... Kind of squats that will open up my hips more and just kind of builds up strength in kind of kind of flexibility stances yeah um just kind of working trying to prevent the injuries because i just think as as you get older as you do sports if your body's weak in any way that's how you kind of pick up injuries oh yeah definitely yeah everybody should be doing some sort of strength training yeah because it's it's going to make your bones much more denser it's going to build your immune system as well, but uh, it's going to make it stronger, you know. And as we get older, you 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 want less chance of falls or yeah, exactly. less chance of breaks and stuff like that. Like, so everybody everybody should be doing doing a little bit. One one thing I got, got in well, since I since I start like weightlifting, I do or using weights uh, as I only realize once I start doing it how technical weightlifting actually is. Because I used to always slag people. All it is is picking something up and putting it down exactly where you found it over and over again for 40 minutes and then you go home and have pr- protein shake but there's a lot more to it than yeah. <laughs> just that like it's like stre- extreme like, like the amount of things that you have to like for instance for a uh, deadlift the amount of things you have to be focusing on to get right to, in order to execute a perfect deadlift and it's one of the best exercises you can do because you're literally working everything at yeah. the same time now like there is there is a problem I always shied away from doing deadlifts because it, famously that's how like Bruce Lee broke his back was doing the deadlift no I tell you what it was it was good morning exercise oh right oh hang on was it good morning exercise uh, yeah it was yeah um, th- where you have the barbell across your back oh and then you bend over and then you stand back up again uh, yeah so like you hinge the hip I think that's how he uh, damaged the ver- uh, vertebrae in his back oh right but, um, yeah because a lot of people like anytime you start uh, weightlifting. Uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, don't don't go n- near deadlifts," uh, because they have a very little uh, bit of result for a lot of risk. Because if you do deadlift wrong, like if you if you uh, bicep curl wrong, there's very little that will happen to you. You're just not going to get full amount of results. You might get like a strained uh, r- uh, arm or whatever, but you won't you won't get too badly injured. But if you are deadlifting, your back's going to be fucked for years. Yeah, uh, a lot of people who uh, deadlift uh, do it wrong. Uh, a common injury is spinal shearing yeah and uh bicep tear so because what most people is um to have the, the grip to have one hand over one hand un- under yeah and it's the hand that's under that's where they normally get the, the bicep. Bi- bicep tear mm-hmm. but the best way to do the deadlift is both hands over the bar yeah and um that way because when you lift because when 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 you lift when you lift uh with the over underhand grip it's just natural that you, you your body slightly twists yeah because you're stronger you're dominant on one side and then that's where your vertebrae 
actually so sh- it's shear, turn, oh. shear and that's where you can, where you can pick up just a nasty injury from it so yeah. if you're ever doing deadlifts bow hand over over yeah. grip much, yeah. much safer yeah the, no, the other one is kind of the squats with the weight way o- o- on your kind of shoulders a lot of people they rest it on their neck instead of oh I know yeah jeez and there's, like there's there's so much that can go wrong there if, if you if you mess it up yeah. like, you know well, you that's mean, why anybody I, I train be, uh, and it, that's why um I see nothing against fitness or gym instructors or yeah. personal trainers, all right? But to me, it doesn't really hold too much weight. Like, I know guys who pay two grand, done a 14-week course, and now they're training people. Yeah. All right? I won't have anybody do a barbell squat with weight until I can see them do a body weight squat first. Yeah. Because a lot of people have poor uh, poor mobility, poor hip mo- mobility. So, like, if you can't do an, a normal body weight squat... Why would I put weight in your back? Yeah. And I see this in gyms all the time. Young lads, personal trainers. Personal trainers, 22 years of age. Full of life experience, huh? <laughs> and um, and load, loading weight across someone's back. When you're when you're squatting, uh, you're supposed to hinge the hip and hinge at the knee at the same time. Yeah, it's like you're trying to take a sh- uh, shit on the ground. Yeah, exactly. And But a lot of people, what they do is they bend at the knee first. Yeah. Because that's and that's the way people is kind of they, when you're a baby you actually squat perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so a lot of people who who are squatting are eventually going to end up with with uh, knee and hip issues. Yeah. So first thing I always do, always get them to do a body weight squat first, and if they can't do that right, then I will keep working on that until they get it right, and then eventually a, an empty bar, a, kind of like a counterweight, and d- then if they're if they're good at that, then I'll start. Only then I'll start. Yeah, anytime I'm doing an exercise before before I before I actually uh, do a weight way, I always get the bar. And I always just practice practice the motion of doing it first. And w- once I get the technique down, I will then start to do it. Because like I I squatting for years. Now I never had any knee injuries, but I, I realized for all, all these years that I've been squat. I was squatting wrong. I was squatting where my body weight was coming down over past my knees instead of come down and uh, pushing off at the heels yeah yeah because you're, you're meant to you're meant to like really focus on pushing off your heels and if your weight's not on your heels you're squatting wrong yeah yeah you see a lot i see a lot of guys in the gym who just it's an ego thing you know i've done it myself and um, where they're, they're squatting and they don't go uh below knee, knee level so when you're squatting and you drop and you only go uh 90 degrees 90 degrees you're you're only working quads yeah, but once once your arse goes past uh, your your kneecap, now you're, uh, you're now you're incorporating glutes, hamstrings, quads, and calves. Now you're working everything. Yeah. So and that's where uh, a lot of people actually uh, get injured from uh, because they're quad dominant. Uh, it's a common problem with footballers. A lot of footballers who t- who tear their hamstring. Yeah. Uh, there's there's two causes. Uh, one is they're quad dominant. And the second is their running mechanics. Yeah. So by slowing down, that's why I do uh, any guy, anybody I coach. I work on a lot of eccentric uh, training. So uh, what's eccentric? Training? Eccentric. So you know what? You know what? Uh, when you're, you know what? As uh, you're squatting, you're going down. Yeah. You're going down. That's eccentric. All yeah. right. And coming up is concentric. Everybody works in concentric. Nobody works in eccentric. So you know when when someone is running and then they start to slow down. Yeah. They're eccentric. Eccentrically uh, slowing down. That's where a lot of the tears happen because they're weak. So plyometrics and landing mechanics is actually actually great for that uh, box jumps. So jumping off a box and learn how to land correctly uh, over time, and then eventually adding adding weight to it. Uh, that's that's really really good for 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 hamstrings and uh, for preventing injury. All right. Yeah. And uh, what are people going to do when they're jumping off a box? Is maybe toes, then the heel, toes of your feet, balls of your feet, and then onto your heel, or are you meant to land kind of flat? Uh, land land flat, but as you land flat, you you're supposed to bend the knees and yeah. kind of dive down into it. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's a there's a there's a good bit in it, but I think uh, a lot of football clubs now are starting to. Are starting to do a eccentric training. Yeah, uh, de- definitely a lot, lot of plyometrics, um, a lot of um, a lot of fighters are doing it as well because it's just good for um, rate of force development. What was the one most common uh, mistake in uh, kind of strength and conditioning training that martial art gyms are using 
right now? What's the one bullshit, bullshit science that martial arts gyms are still using today in, in terms of trying to get strength and conditioning? Uh, strength and conditioning? Um, overtraining is, is probably one of the, one of the biggest things because um, a lot of people do, who are doing strength and conditioning are n- actually not qualified. Yes. Yeah. They're getting stuff off YouTube and they're getting stuff off the internet and it's not backed by science and and they're using it. Um, what I see in a few gyms is some guys training like bodybuilders. Yeah. Uh, there's no crossover. Um, what really, really works is uh, a lot of body weight stuff. Um, because, listen, when you're, when you're in the ring or in the cage, you're not going to be benching 200 kgs. You're not no. going to be squatting 200 kgs. So it's pointless you're doing that in the gym. All right, it's okay. Uh, it's okay to do that for one day a week in the gym, one heavy day, just to keep strength. But what you want is explosiveness. You want power, so you want a lot of medicine ball stuff. Yeah. Uh, TRX training. Um, a lot. Uh, a lot of a lot of techniques with with, with sparring partners. So, because you want everything to be every training that you get ready for it has to be fight fight specific. Yeah. So there's no there's no point in. There's no point in going in uh, three days a week and deadlifting. Like you're not going to deadlift in in in, in the cage. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. So yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. Yeah. Just like basically bodybuilding exercises that are not specific to your training, and then overtraining will be the most. Because like I remember having this conversation. I think I was on on my way to like Carlo for a sparring day, and I, uh, I think his name was Tyreek. Uh, I picked up. He used to train here. Oh, Tarek, yeah, yeah, Tarek. yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was calling Tarek in the car yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, Tarek, he used to train here, and I think he's on a certain conditioning program. Uh, and he was just talking about, um, uh, you the type of like for grappling. It's very well, you're putting you're loading you're putting stress onto the, onto the muscles. So doing resistance training for jiu-jitsu would be kind of pointless because your body's been uh, already already pretty good at, uh, at that from sparring yeah for because it's already going through a lot of resistance in grappling so you should be working with weights uh, to kind of counteract that resistance training so you're kind of supplementing resistance training as well as then using weights to build strength would you, you agree with that or do you disagree um kind of to, to an extent uh what what really I think is actually underused in, in regards to strength training is uh, bands, rubber bands. Yeah. Um, and because a, in grappling, it, it's a lot of I- isometric holds. Yeah, I, I, that's the word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like you you need you need to to work a lot on that. Actually, what I used to do is um you know the the not the medicine balls the you know the the rubber balls the the ladies use for in the gym. Yeah. Then there's one in shape of a peanut. Yeah. Well, I used to just have that home in the house, and I used to get it in a tr- in a choke, in a like a, oh yeah, like a like a rear naked choke. Yeah, yeah. And just practice holding the choke for as long as I can. Oh, so you're just working on your grip and your working on my grip. Yeah, yeah. Because like, there's no there's no uh, barbell or dumbbell is going to give me that type of training. Yeah, exactly. So you know you need you need a crossover. Uh, so as as regards to weight training uh, for fighters yeah definitely like you, you need at least one day of of strength training yeah you need to be strong but a lot of your stuff should be then um high repetition explosiveness um so medicine ball throws um if you you're doing like a bench press really lighter weight but uh lowering the weight really really slow and then exploding up really really fast yeah because you you want to so you're not training like a bodybuilder but you're you want to cross over to hit all them fast switch muscle fibers yeah you won't be able to be flexible whereas if you think about the classic bodybuilder very stiff yeah yeah so yeah exactly and i used to do bodybuilding uh i done bodybuilding for many years and it really affected my because back then you just want to be big and you didn't care about flexibility yeah now nah, man if i could turn back time i would be stretching every day um, <laughs> but, uh, you yeah. know i do a lot of stretching exercises but like even I, I feel like i should be working like uh i think most of my family do yoga uh so, and even I, I think i should be incorporating more yoga kind of stretches in or maybe even doing like 20 minutes of yoga every second or third day yeah, definitely. That's uh, I'm actually there's a place out in Clane that's starting to, that does yoga. Aruna, I think it's called. Now I've yet to, yet yet to call them, but I definitely want to do yoga. It's great for flexibility, mm. and uh, yeah, I think it, it, flexibility is is so important, especially in jujitsu. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, in MMA as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's it's very important. I think like I I've started to try to uh, move away from relying on my flexibility 
because I think as I get older in Jiu Jitsu, that's your fle flexibility will go. Uh, and if you keep using, if you're like constantly curving your spine, your spine will start to get damaged. So I'm kind of going away from flexible uh, Jiu Jitsu and trying to move into more of a kind of a minimal movement Jiu Jitsu, and more kind of like maybe pressure game or maybe just like ones that you're not overloading your spine or hips too much yeah but i still want to have that uh, flexibility because i think if more flexible you are the less injuries uh, you're gonna well pick exactly up. you want to be supple you know what i mean yeah you, and you have you read that book this uh, supple leopard or no no who wrote i don't know but, uh, <laughs> is, it, is it any good is it it's, it's many yeah yeah there's a book about being the uh supple leopard and it's about movement training uh, I remember talking to Dermot about it. Uh, I, I can't think of your man's name. Have you ever looked at the guy online, Steve Maxwell? Um, no. He is absolutely brilliant. He is, was one of the first Americans uh, to get a black belt from the Gracies All right. in uh, jiu-jitsu. And he's, does, uh, he does uh, strength and conditioning programs for jiu-jitsu. But he's all about mobility and all about flexibility. But he's, man, he's got some absolutely brilliant, um, brilliant videos online about how to stay uh, supple and... Um, and mobile, and you know how it's going to increase your increase your uh, your jujitsu game. Yeah, no, there's a there's a there's a guy you, can, you subscribe online, um, yoga for BJJ, and it's just all basic uh, jujitsu, all what basic movements and stretches that you need in yoga for jujitsu. So they have a lot of spine uh, warm up exercises. Um, and they're they're all basically Estanja poses and yeah they're basically Estanja because I was talking to them uh, which is a type of yoga I think there's three or four different types of yoga and Estanja is one of them uh, and and basically that's where a large part of his yoga comes from but uh, they're all they're all really good for uh, they're all they're all hold they hold those stretches for a long time. So it's good kind of for resistance training for kind of yeah definitely yeah definitely. so yeah uh, and probably yeah I'm gonna start to incorporate I do already do a lot of my exercises are yoga poses that I use to warm up a lot of them are kind of rehab injuries uh, exercises that maybe you pull, pull a hamstring you, you use to rehab because I think they're really good for in terms of not overloading your muscles because if you're going to, if you're going from weight training into your actual jiu jitsu class, you don't want to be fucked after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't yeah. be over. You you don't be wearing your muscles out too much. You want to be able to actually concentrate on the important part, which is the jiu jitsu. Uh, and yeah, and like a lot of uh, body weight exercises are actually some of the best stuff you can ever do. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like everybody thinks uh, to be strong, you have to lift weight. Body weight exercises are one of the one of the best things you can do, and the more and you can do them anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can like if you have. Two hands and a flat ground. You can do push-ups. You can do like jump squats. You, yeah, you can do like. When I um, when I was getting ready for one of my fights. Um, I actually called Jerry Loftus because I said I need I need uh, a running program. Uh, because yeah. you know for cardio, and uh, Jerry Jerry is sixty six, sixty six, sixty seven. Doesn't look a day over forty. Yeah, fit as a flea. All right, uh, he won the superstars thing uh, back in the. Back in the eighties, like super, super, super fit. He was in, he was in the army for years, and he was one of their um, their instructors. But I went out to the Curra with Jerry one day, and he said we we're going to run every day for five days. He goes, I'm going to show you what to do, and then you can go, you can do it yourself. Then, so Monday it was just a, a long run over all the hills, and uh, it was an eight k run. Uh, the second day then we ran for 10 minutes to warm up then he had me jogging for 30 seconds sprinting for 30 seconds jogging for 30 seconds for a full half hour yeah and then just jog back to the car that was on that was on Tuesdays and Thursdays and um, man that guy killed me <laughs> like, <laughs> we, we ran, after the run I said Jerry he left me for dead like he just, he just Man, sprinted by sprinting me. and yeah. then it, it, sprinting and jogging for 30 seconds will kill anybody <laughs> yeah. so I turned 30 minutes and, uh, he, like, he was just so fit I, Jerry anybody asked this never happened man but um, when we went back we parked the car at Lumble House and then uh, he had me uh, you know doing pull ups out of a tree he had me doing dips over yeah. against the wall just out, outdoor stuff like and uh, a lot of mobility exercises. I was really, really great. Like you know, so he's one of he's one of the old school type of trainers, but yeah. legit. Well, I think like pull ups and dips are so are like 
are even in in weight training are so important for your weight training exercise. I think that like I remember even listening to Dan Strauss who I had on last week. Uh, he was talking about his weight training. And he said if there was one exercise that he could do, uh, if he had to only do one exercise, it would be like pull ups. Yeah, that's that's the be all and end all of actual strength training. You know what? I actually think uh, I they should do what to do in a lot of uh, a lot of schools in the like of Russia and Ukraine, where they have um, an hour each day in the gym, and each child has to do at least ten pull ups. Uh, at least ten pull ups. At least, at least. And, and I can't. I can't. I, can, I, I can't do. Yeah, I can manage ten. Like ego ten. Can you? But, um, That's better than me. Uh, but uh, I think, I, I I think that should be done in all our schools. Yeah. That an hour a day, kids should be brought into a gym and just body weight exercises. Yeah. Uh, like it must be like something in uh, Eastern uh, Europeans genetics, because like me, me, you, Rory, and I think I think it could be in Gus, where you're trying to do uh, pull ups. And we were managing three or four. I, I I thought I could get the most. Marius with one shoulder comes over after like dislocating and never ever getting it repaired. Does thirty pull ups in front of us and we're like I know. Do you, do you remember the day? Where was it? Was it the Live and I also? Uh they had a competition who could do uh, as many press ups as you can. And every, everybody was doing, you know, two handed press ups. Yeah. Right? And Marius came over with his fucked up shoulder, right? Yeah. <laughs> Pulled his back out. And bet everybody by doing one arm push ups. <laughs> what if everybody? I go, man, that just blew my mind. And he didn't even <laughs> want the prize, just to keep it. <laughs> just to show everybody he could do it. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. Yeah, uh, it's insane. So, yeah, if, they, if they're doing that from like a ki- kid's age, I guess by the time they're like our age, right, <laughs> they should be able to do about 30. Yeah, sure. Look at, look at Big Marius. Mm. And like he does a lot of uh, kettlebell uh, training. Yeah, he, he only does kettlebell. Yeah, that's all he does. Yeah, he only does kettlebell. And my god, I was actually rolling him one day. I didn't realize I had two vertebrae out my back. Oh yeah. Until he popped them back in for me. Oh really? Yeah, he literally had me in a bear hug, and he was he was going to sweep me, and all I was click click. Yeah. And he goes, "You all right?" He said, "Actually, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> you just saved me fifty quid in the physiotherapist." <laughs> but yeah, Jesus. yeah, yeah. He he used to do weight lift, lifting as well. Oh man, he's ridiculously and strong. And then he got ridiculously flexible. Yeah. So he's he's kept that kind of strength from his old weight uh, weightlifting days, and he does kettlebell exercises. Uh, but like he's r- super flexible. Like he's really really. F- he works f- after class every day. He's working stretches exercises, and like he just stretches after class. Like he might take ten fifteen minutes stretching. He's super flexible. Like yeah, no. crazy flexibility and just ridiculously ridiculously strong. Oh yeah! Like the minute he grabs a hold, yeah, you know that's it. <laughs> it's like an anaconda. <laughs> I always, I always think like Coach Marius gets super pissed off <laughs> every time we call him Big Marius. <laughs> yeah, because when he came in, he was huge, and uh, our, our Coach Marius wasn't a. Oh, he was he, he was like about ninety kilos, ninety five kilos. On a bad day, maybe a hundred kilos, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but wasn't 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 that big. Like uh, so, like obviously he, they had to share the same name. This big, huge giant guy comes in, <laughs> big Marius, and now now Coach Marius is he's he's got a lot bigger <laughs> yeah. over the years, and like and not not in like fat or not. No, just 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 m- uh, muscular, yeah, yeah, yeah. Size of the arms on him. See the size of the arms on lately. Jesus yeah. Christ, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> I avoided certain conditioning program, uh, certain conditioning class like the plague. It's <laughs> mad. <of> it. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool because uh, you can see the change in gears when he gets focused. When Marius gets focused, he just gets super focused. It's like there's just this little thing goes off in his eyes. Yeah, it's actually crazy. And you see him doing a strength program. The, the guy he fought uh, when he won the ADCCs, your man um, Fagan. What was his name? Wayne Fagan. Yeah. I was helping Marius just warm up in in the back room. And we were we we're talking and we were laughing and joking. And then he was getting he was getting warmed up and we were, you know, do doing some drills and all that kind of stuff. Then he was just bounced on the spot and uh he just goes, you know, leave me for a second. And I just left for a second and then just this completely different look in his eye. Uh. Like <laughs> I mean serial serial killer look in his eye. Just just cerebral. And then it wasn't Marius the coach walking out yeah. when the music playing. It was just this warrior, yeah. and went out and he ended up getting the win. But 
he just when he's when he anything got to do with competition, he just becomes this completely different person. Different person. It's it's amazing to what amazing and frightening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because you walk around the gym and he like he's li- he's sore and he's kind of limping and then. Then he, he, he starts. He, he, he goes time for rolling, yeah. and then he, you're getting smashed. Like. <laughs> yeah, like any time, any time, any time, any time I'm getting ready for an MMA fight, Marius is always working with me, rolling and stuff like yeah. that. Like, and we were one day we were we were grappling, and um, I always want to sprawl and brawl. That's my that's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, Marius knows that, so he spent a lot of time trying to take me down, and I couldn't believe it. I was able to fend him off for 15 minutes. Oh, that's pretty right. Good. That yeah. was good. Now, yeah. for fifteen minutes, now I was shattered, and I was looking at the clock, and the clock stopped. You know, round round was over. Yeah, and Marius get no, we're 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 keep going, and he wouldn't quit until he got me down, and he eventually got me down, and just manhandled me. Yeah, now but, then uh, you're, you're a pretty hard person to take down. But, but yeah, like, surviving Marius for fifteen minutes. I couldn't just, believe it. I think a lot of that was backpedaling. <laughs> <laughs> disconnect, disconnect. Yeah, that was it. But uh, man, once you get a hold, once you got a hold of me, that was it. Like it yeah. was just, just crazy. It was. Um, I actually learned one of the best lessons from Marius. Uh, when my very first fight camp, I was so nervous about going to the ground. Yeah, I wasn't confident going to the ground, so I wanted to sprawl and brawl. And I knew y- the uh, guy Matty was going to spend time trying to take me down. He was a wrestler. Yeah, and uh, so Marius really drill, drilled, uh, drilled, drilled me on it. But we were out. We were sparring, and uh, I was throwing a couple of punches, and uh, landed one or two in Marius. Marius landed one or two in back of me, and next Marius shoots for a takedown, and I got him in a guillotine, right? Yeah. Really tight guillotine, and then I let it go, right, and pushed him off, and Marius stopped the fight, and he says, "What did what you what you let me go for?" Yeah. He said, "You had a guillotine there." I said, "Why were you going to tap?" He says, "Now you'll never know." <laughs> I'm going, "Why were you close to tapping?" He goes. You'll never know. You, sh- you shouldn't. You shouldn't have let go. And that was one of my. Uh, and to this day, he will not answer. We said, "Was I even close?" <laughs> and he goes, "You'll never know." No. Uh, I, 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 when I think back, I, I, it was deep, but I don't think it was. It was enough because man, he's an animal. He's hard. He's hard to tap because um, I remember I have I had him in a guillotine. I squeezed for about ten seconds. And I realized I'm probably not going to tap him with this. Turned <laughs> it for a darts, and while I was darsing, he goes. You were closer with the guilty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he he he, le- he gave me one of one of my life's best best lessons to trust yourself. You know, have a little bit, yeah, yeah, have yeah, a little more faith in yourself. You know, yeah, exactly. And uh, and I, I always think, geez, did I have it? Did I have it? You'll never know. <laughs> You'll never know. Yeah. Uh, that'll eat you up for, for. It's a, still yeah forever. Um, you know, and I I don't think I've ever gotten closed. To, to even tap him, no. I, I just spend a lot of time just trying to survive. I've Im- <laughs> I imagine me. like if you are to tap Mario out with a choke, you'll probably pass out. <laughs> he like uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't know if you'll tap to a choke. <laughs> no, he he no, oh, he'd he'd rather. Uh, or it'll he'd, be pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. If if there ever a guy that's gonna go out in the shield, that'd be him. Yeah. You know, exactly. like just yeah. fight till the very end. Like there's. there's Man, I love that guy. You know what I mean? He's, he's done so much for me. Yeah. As, as regard, not just as, as a coach, but as a friend. You know what I mean? And um, even when time, when I am um, out from injuries and stuff like that, like, you know, he's always making sure you're okay. And, yeah. You know, he's, um, no, he's actually one of the best. He's one of the best coaches I've ever had. I've had a lot of great coaches all, over uh, over my uh, time, but Marius is definitely up there. To, definitely one of, yeah. one of the best. Yeah. Cool. Uh I think that's a good way to end it, Liam. Thanks uh, so much for coming in. Oh, nice one, Mark. Listen, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. It was a uh, is a pleasure, and you know we have to do this again. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next man. time, uh, next time we get ready for uh, for a uh, fight camp, uh, I want my belt. I want my belt back. So uh, we we'll do a prep fight. Yeah, or a yeah. podcast about the uh, before the fight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'd be great. And yeah, I'll have you definitely and talk more about your kind of course as it develops. Like, yeah, I've, yeah, I've only, anything. I've only, uh, yeah, one more year to do, and then that's it. Fully fledged, qualified sports scientist. And then what are you going into? Uh, preventative medicine. I yeah. really want. Uh, on a side note, I'm actually working with uh, Doctor Emmett Byrne. Yep. Uh, Emmett Byrne used to play rugby for Ireland. All right. And he played um, for Leinster as well. So he is part of the XL program, and he's running um, the XL program in Tala, in Ledger Centre, and they eventually want to open up a place in Nasir, and they want me to run it. 
Oh, brilliant. So that'll be me. So I'll be working with uh, cancer patients, um, cardiac patients. So and just uh, to get them fit and healthy again, that's that's the dream. Oh, brilliant. Yep. Well, keep up the good work, Liam. And uh, thanks so much for coming. And cheers. Thanks very much, Mark. <laughs>